I V M. Hey everyone, welcome to the Positively Unlimited podcast. And today I'm talking about something that a lot of us go through, especially in the summers or during Christmas, New Year time, travel anxiety. Faced it? I faced it for a really, really long time recently. And it was about doing paperwork. Well, I faced it recently and it lasted through the entire visa process. And I also realized I have another very funny quirk when I travel. So ever since childhood, my mom would constantly tell me to keep my bag zipped up and I would forget. So every time that I was walking around with my bag unzipped and open, she kept saying that somebody will put things in it. Now, when I travel, and especially at the airport, I kid you not, I behave like someone's going to unzip my bag and put some drugs in it and I'm going to get caught. So this is my biggest fear when I travel. Does it give me anxiety? Well, it makes me anxious. I'm quite a fidgety character when I'm going through um, security and I'm generally clumsy. So I have to drop something at least once. But slowly over time, I have realized how to laugh at myself, call myself silly and just pick up and walk. And I usually get to the airport hours in advance. I'd much rather sit at the airport sipping a coffee than be running through security. So getting there one, two hours before flight, etc. Whatever those rules are, very easy for me to do. I'd much rather do that than face the anxiousness. But today I'm talking about the kind of anxiety that we get when we have to do paperwork, which is getting our visas processed. So the first thing that I want to call all of us out on is this conditioning that we have that if we have an Indian passport, it's all very difficult. So the moment we think we have to apply for a visa, we start cursing ourselves for having an Indian passport and how easy it is for other passport holders. Maybe it is, but sitting in that thought is not helping us get through whatever it is that we need to get through. The second thing that I realized is a lot of us just don't plan in time. This time, strangely, I had a travel agent who is a stickler for rules. I mean, this babe was another level. She had my file down with every single paper, checked, marked and noted with pencil saying what it is about. And it made me realize that it can actually be kind of simple but we complicate it. Now, let's just think about this, okay? Most of the visa offices tell you how many days they take for processing the visa. Most of them also have it written down that apply one to three months in advance. Yet, a whole bunch of us will go 15 days in advance. Now, if you are not going to feel anxious, then I'm not sure what you're going to feel. Then, if they tell you 15 days or 20 days or 30 days, why do we fail to count the weekends? Our government offices don't work on holidays. Why would visa offices work on holidays? So learn to count the numbers correctly. The third piece that comes in is paperwork. Now, actually, when I looked at the file this time, it's pretty simple. They ask you for tickets. They ask you for your stay. They ask you for your IT returns, your bank statements and credit card statements. They ask you for any additional ID. And if you are staying with someone, there's a letter, their passport, etc. Right. But what seems to harass a lot of us is one, booking those tickets, booking the stay, giving them our IT returns and giving them bank statements. Now, I don't know why this is such a big issue. I made an issue of it as well. And hence, I started asking this question saying, why is it such a pain for you? And I realized this. We are all so afraid of rejection because rejection from the visa office means we will end up losing money. If you have booked your ticket and your stay and you don't get your visa, you're going to lose money. Brought me to another question. How much money will I actually lose if I have booked refundable tickets and a refundable stay? Not much actually. And if I just say that to myself, I can go through the process a lot more calmly. Coming to the idea of IT returns, a lot of us don't file our returns, but that is changing because a lot of us work in jobs and companies demand it. Secondly, a lot of us come from the conditioning that 
we must not show our tax papers anywhere because or we must fib our total annual income so that we don't get taxed extra i mean i remember as a child when we were asked to fill in yearly income in any form it was just a standard 1 lakh a yearly income 1 lakh i don't know why but this is how we have always been filling forms this is how our parents have taught us to fill forms now what this has possibly led to is all of us getting petrified of revealing any of our financials and three years of it returns if i file them i have the papers and i give it okay maybe you are not showing your papers and you need to show someone else's papers which is your fathers your brothers your spouses well get the papers from them and show it six months bank statement you can get it from the bank in 10 minutes but we make such a big deal about it because running around for our paperwork is a tedious task why is it a task you want to go on a holiday or you want to travel So if you don't put in the work then who will why should somebody else whether it's a travel agent or your office boy or whoever do all the running around for you and why should you then sit in that stress or then give them that stress honestly when i now look back over the one and a half month process of getting two visas done it was pretty simple but the anxiety was about getting rejected the anxiety was about my travel plans going for a toss the anxiety was about all the fun that i was planning to have in my head the holiday that i was already living going down the drain and this is why we feel so anxious one we don't know how to do our paperwork we don't understand what it forms and bank statements etc look like and we don't know how to put that together two we are not willing to work with ourselves and say let's book refundable tickets at an early date and then in case if something goes wrong be open to shifting it and number three we don't want to be questioned or rejected i remember going for my us visa few years ago and you know us visa is kind of hyped i don't know what it is it's as if i don't think a mother giving birth to triplets goes through the kind of stress and trauma that somebody will put you through when you have to go for your us visa and you're standing there in queue and you're seeing multiple people getting rejected you're anyway petrified because everyone has told you how it's so hard and you're never going to get it and you know it's never going to happen and then in front of you you're seeing them give back the forms and say it's not all right all the papers are not there you need to fix something right and you walk up there which is what happened to me i walked up there and in 3 minutes in 3 questions he said come back in 3 days and take it and i realized that the only thing he wanted to know was whether i would come back to my country or not so the moment i told him that my mom was ill and my dad was ill and i lived with both of them and i was their sole caretaker he granted me the visa <laughs> it was as simple as that and when i stepped out i said okay what was all the noise and hype about now when you get rejected one you are feeling really awful but two are you willing to look at your papers and understand what went wrong how many of us look at our files and say oh maybe i did miss a paper none of us do that we walk out and we behave as if we have done nothing wrong and we have given everything that they've asked for but they've still rejected us and i'm sure that happens too but travel anxiety especially the one that stems from paperwork can really be processed and worked through if you can start a little early because they tell you start one month to three months in advance if you can make sure that you get all your papers sorted and you file them in a correct order and number 3 you stay open to making and number 3 you stay open to making certain changes to your trip in case there is a delay in the visa or you make peace with the fact that there is a really eeny meeny tiny chance that the visa won't come through for me i eventually got through the travel anxiety by telling myself what's my worst case scenario i'll shift the date that is what i told myself and i just went through it was the waiting process fun not at all i mean i would love for them to tell us that your visa has been processed and it's either been denied or you've been given the visa but they don't tell you that they just tell you your passport is ready for collection so i get the uncertainty that comes from it but if we can overcome the noise in our head about being indian passport holders if we can just get our papers in order and if we can be flexible and learn to improvise with our travel dates 
I think visa processes can become a lot more easier than what it is right now. So I hope that you will find it slightly easier to get through it the next time that you go in to get a visa done. And I'm going to sign off right now. But in case, if you want more tips on how to deal with feeling anxious and letting go of fear, there are a whole bunch of episodes previously done on the IVM app and the IVM website. Make sure you tune into them and make sure you use the exercises. They're full of written exercises or things to say to yourself. Make sure you use all of them. And I'm sure you'll get by like an ace. I'm also doing a video about this whole experience and overcoming travel anxiety, where I'm going to be talking about these topics and everything else that comes with traveling a lot more on YouTube, on Instagram and on my website. So stay tuned for that video. India's a massive subcontinent home to truly stunning diversity. Behind the veils of smoke, that obscure our thriving cities, our history is still alive, glimmering like sequins, waiting to be discovered. And if you, like me, are straining to hear the echoes of our past, this podcast is for you. I'm Anirudh Kanisetti, a history and geopolitics researcher, and I host Echoes of India, a history podcast about India, by Indians, and for Indians. In Echoes, we journey through the complex histories of South Asia and what they can teach us about our globalized world. Tune in every Wednesday on ivmpodcast.com or your favorite podcast app. Think fast. If I tell you I'm Parsi, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Dhansak, I don't blame you. My name is Parzan Patel. You may know me as the Bavi Bride. Though I run a popular Parsi food blog, the truth is I didn't know anything about Parsi food until I got married. It was just my luck. He turned out to be your typical sadra lega wearing, kawab khari eating Parsi boy. And the only thing I knew was dhansak, or rather how to eat it. But there's more to Parsi food than dhansak. And there is more to us than our obsession with eggs and our legendary Rani cafes. Welcome to Not Just Dhansak. A fresh new show where I talk to friends, fellow Bavas and Parsi entrepreneurs about all things Bhonu. A little bit of history, a dash of Bava madness and a lot of food talk. There's more to Parsis than meets the eye and there's certainly more to us than Dhansak. Join me every Tuesday as I talk to some of my favorite Parsis in the food space in India and beyond. I am the Bavi Bride and this is not just Dhansak.